I hope that I won't be stealing anything from Funk and Fefe when I say that 2016 was the year of the cyber. Today, they will do it. They will let it cyber again from all barrels. And in that sense, welcome to our two cyber ninjas, Frank and Fefe, and a warm welcome, please. And welcome to the translation. Your translators are Zebalis. Dispatcher. And Franz T and Anwin are waiting in the wings to take over later. Hashtag feedback C3T or Twitter crown C3Lingo or email to hello at c3lingo.org. Tell us. And are you all there? Shall we start? Oh yeah. Na good. All right. <laughs> If you say so. <laughs> Get your free Windows 10 upgrade. FIFA forced me. <laughs> They're good. All right. The usual resolution check. <laughs> Calls of louder, louder. It's too quiet. It's true. It, it wasn't that great compared to previous it, years. button -ish. But it's never satisfactory the first time. They always mm. have to redo it. Reality is overvalued edition 2016. Now almost without simulation artifacts. <laughs> And once again. Three times the charm as usual. See the balloons. Yeah, illuminated balloons. Lovely. Okay, good. That's that's okay now. That, and I uh, want one of each color on stage at the end. Okay, the year 2016 was, well, not that great. Um, it, it wasn't very easy to get slides together, that I should say in advance. We didn't want to lead you to suicide or depression. Uh, we had that for you, the depression, so we'll start. So, we looked for images that would really incorporate the year 2016, and this one is one of those. Surely you've seen that. I haven't. Me neither. Our American friends sent this one about this. They had it a bit tougher. Also, we can say, finally, the apocalypse is here. We have been waiting for years. So you can actually pinpoint this on several things. But I want to say straight in advance that one excuse is eliminated because we were prepared. The Amazon Terms of Service were updated and actually contain a section on the zombie apocalypse. Point 47C, 5710, sorry. So well hidden, but these Terms of Service are no longer valid because when the zombie apocalypse uh, Because they were very precise, and Amazon are not the only ones that anticipated problems like this. The Pentagon plans the zombie apocalypse, apparently, so they are very well prepared. They really have a training scenario that they devised for it. What kind of measures as an upcoming military strategist you should take when the zombie apocalypse, or if it comes, we've illustrated it. And particularly notable about the German... Uh, report was the category, which I can't decipher from back here. Uh, so you see, if a newspaper starts introducing an undead category, something is going to happen. But it's true, you need this category because we had this 
report as well, this, this new item. In Permazens, a drunk person called, announced the zombie apocalypse, but this text is worth it. So there was an emergency call at first from a woman that had saw a man with a pistol saying something will happen, and they started moving and went into a cafe and, and someone wanted to keep the people safe from the zombie apocalypse, and they collected this man, uh, tied him up, and then he had the excuse of some kind of gang zombie challenge, you know. So the police said the problem was that the shocked affected people were very hard to calm down. So you see that the collective subconscious does have something with the zombie apocalypse. So this was a fairly worldwide phenomenon. The, uh, for example, in Japan, we have uh, this. If this becomes common, we'll have a big problem. A pensioner just uh, blew himself up. Or in, if in China, the background to this, schools were closed for smog. And the school director said, well, we'll move the test outside. Outside, this is how it looked. Well, and in Europe too, the apocalypse came closer, didn't it? Great Britain, Germany is still facing it, it hasn't happened yet, our new president will be sworn in, so let's not forget what this guy here, Roland Gornes, uh, who was in a torture prison because of the person who is due to become president next year. In America, uh, there was another apocalypse, which you may have noticed, but the apocalypse of this kind, the, the one, man, one man's problem is another man's opportunity. The current book by Frank-Walter Steinmeier, uh, still foreign minister and soon president, and on Black Friday, Trump uh, paraphernalia were 30 percent reduced. So 2016, in every sense, was extraordinary. And I've tried to to visualize this by a collection of headlines. Whatever you search for, uh, some kind of headline saying it was extraordinary was there. Uh, and we sought out a few headlines we thought particularly exceptional. France being on top because they have a state of emergency since 2016. And 2016, in January, uh, they extended it until ISIS could be totally defeated. Well, this could take a bit longer, but we're sure. And an emergency like that is not only helpful in politics, but also with international associations such as the World Health, World Health Organization, securing funding by calling, uh, by announcing a global emergency. And in February, very surprisingly, France extended the state of emergency, but only until the end of May. So Amnesty International, of course, didn't like it that much, criticizing it. And did you know what happened in May? Yes, France extended state of emergency. Well, and in July, and because it works so well, Erdogan, of course, joined in. In export hits, that's what you call it these days. And the Americans, uh, they... Laser pointers are being utilized. Also, Americans extended their state of emergency for 9-11. While you're at it, it's working so well. Erdogan couldn't hold himself down and, and extended his state of emergency. Then in November, there was an exception to the exception because the World Health Organization declared their emergency over. Hang on, hang on. Don't be happy. Don't don't. Don't rejoice too early, because then suddenly a little panic always helps. This is about bird flu. And did you know what happened in December? Ah, oh, France extended their state of emergency. Well, yeah. So, the way this looks on the streets could be observed in Brazil. What was it? The Olympics? Yeah, the Olympics summer games. And you could see people like this on the streets.
Reality 2016. So, security is important. You, you all, we all know that and agree. Terrorists could use helicopters, for example. From afar, this is how it looked. And the nicest thing we thought were the media reports. Ooh, a... Uh, What's that? Okay. What's the original name? Donna Gurglav? Like Pan, Adams? Angela to Gargle Blaster. Gargle Blaster. Yes, that was a Gargle Blaster. It yeah. smells a bit. More, seems to be consistent of rum mostly and maybe a bit of Marty as well. All right, but not much. Well, it's, it's gargling away very nicely or sparkling. Uh, so we've been looking for an image for a long time that kind of summarizes the media and this is what we came up with and I think that's all that has to be said. And then you ask yourself, well, the media perspective on events, uh, they have a certain, well, images have a certain power, don't they? So this one, for example, you think, ah, somehow I know the other side of that movie. What did they do to this poor lion? And um, then the mighty internet finds, well, that lion was actually just having a tomography, a, a, a CT scan, and someone made the other image out of that. Details, details. details. But all in all, the future in 2016 looked more like this. And then we asked ourselves, why actually? What is actually the reason that everything went a bit pear-shaped? And we went searching a bit and found a man that at least had a lot of fun. Reality, what are you talking about? This is, uh, sorry, what was the name? Vladislav Sorkov, something like that. In Russia. So his responsibility in Russia is keeping public order and he did things like uh, founding a youth organization uh, that in German press was called the Putin Youth. In Russia it's called the Nashi Hours. So nice festivities like this or at the right there, uh, sports activities under the watchful eye of the important representative of the people and then they had this kind of opposition party that they founded and financed and with Kremlin money and that because the main party has kind of survived itself or run its course. So the interesting thing is that these things then leak out that someone's done this. So these people do something, found a party, finance Nazi skinheads or the Contra organization for the Nazi skinheads or a human rights organization or something. And then suddenly something leaks out. Oh yeah, the, the money came from us. So the sense in this is that reality is being destroyed. You rob people of any orientations because anything they have as positions that you can hold hold on to, heroes, organizations, positions and such, is completely virtualized. We have to know that, that this man comes from avant-garde theater. So this is someone who comes from theater and he has written a book as well, which appeared in German, close to zero is the translation of the German title, and he always disputed that this has happened, but when the book was turned into a theater play, he actually went there and said to the director, well, you have to edit a few things, it's not completely correct. So uh, this should be our mascot for this evening about the reality section. So previously, the reality was still simple. You simply were lying. You just created your own reality. There are weapons of mass destruction we have to invade. Uh, so shake the UN bird or something. But then someone comes around the corner and, and destroys the nicest story with facts. So sadly, no weapons of mass destruction in Iran. Even the CIA have to admit it. Silly, right? You, that's not what you want. That's not how it works. So, very stern stare. So, new now, completely destroy reality. And he has a very, very learned scholar here in Donald Trump. We were searching. We didn't have to search long. 
the nice statements by Trump. He says things like, he says, you, you are what you think you are. You can be Swedish, constructivist thinking, uh, fighting fighter helicopters, whatever you want these days. And you can say things like, yeah, I'm not really provocative. I don't want to be. Uh, I do love provoking people, but yes, I, I do. So, experts, a very important thing to have. So, just employ many experts and listen to them. Experts are important and nice, but I don't need any. So, we'll have to speed things up a bit. Uh, for and against abortion, for and against... Uh, Gay marriage. Gay marriage, thank you. Democrats and Republicans <laughs> alike. And wants to become president or does not want to become president. So, a kind of quantum state of reality. And the thing about Swedish is that his family said he, they were from Sweden for a long time. Ah, and then there was this other person with red hair, wasn't there? Sweden Do you know again. what she's called in, in English? Uh, Pippi Longstocking. Literal yeah. translation, yeah. yeah. I think. Pretty sure. Um, we're really sorry if we destroy your childhood memories now, but reality is over anyway. Another nice thing was this thing here, remember? Last year. David Cameron, <laughs> who said something about a pig. What kind of photo is that? Someone took a long time to remember in the audience. <laughs> Still coming up, hold on. So, when the Panama Papers were leaked, he had a few, well, quantum reality jumps, and those were Monday, private matter, Tuesday, so, I see this progressive shift from reali of realities. Uh, Mark, uh, we have included this. It was the BBC state television, as it were, that had this. So, very, very happy teacher. So, this now is the new normality. Get used to it. Google has got used to it. So a bad day for Europe is translated as a good day for Europe in German. And there's a little li literary role model, isn't there? Does anyone remember? Exactly. The older people among you will know this from there. The, the younger ones will know that originally it was stolen from Nietzsche. Uh, uh, thus spake a secret slogan of the Assassinen Order, who said, nothing is true and everything is allowed. And we see that everyone's playing by that rule now. There's a new, very common word for that, post-factual. So it's post-truth, it is usually in English. Okay, so the young and naive ultras, which are a team of journalists, have given us, leaked this material to us. In 2002 or 2003, you supported the Iraq war that created ISIS. Is this your politically largest error? I support, never support a war. I did not support the Iraq war. The target was defined and the target was the war against terror. The war is led by certain allies. Uh, which have been brought together in the, in the anti-ISIS coalition and the government supports this war. Government age, post-truth. Uh, of course, people say that yes, we live in post-truth times, post-factual, post-factual. This is very important. Many examples, for example, from the Arab world, there are weapons. That's why we don't deliver any weapons to them, says Sigmar Gabriel, economic minister and vice chancellor. We've talked so much about our supposed 
collaboration of Rammstein at what you call the drone wall. Do not believe in rumors and U.S. government being informed that the U.S. Rammstein base had some further tasks planning, supervising, and evaluating air operations. It's not about how drones are being used. We find that correct and good, and that's exactly how we perceive this. The basic right to asylum does not have an upper limit, but 800,000 on the long term is too much. Spying on my friends, that is just not on. Isn't it time to invite, to get Edward Snowden to Germany? I don't know what the one should have in, in, in common with the other. Very normal. Most countries have this. Conspiracy theories, post-factual. No one wants to change products being offered for cryptography. This is a topic from nerds, for nerds. Uh, there was never a deal with Syria. Are we not giving a deal with to Turkey either? No, no deal with Turkey. What then? This is propaganda. The Chancellor is not lying. The government is in favor of a nuclear free world. So we all have to take this test. And I find it wonderful to be to be surveilled by media and uh, if, by thinking for themselves and find out, find out the truth. So, post-truth, young and naive. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you very much for, for the videos, and this has been paid for by donations, and uh, they like to receive your donations. As we have seen, oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen, I'm, I'm really sorry. That is, so, that's still Hamburg? Yes. Sorry, sorry, I'm still in Hamburg? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. So... Is that, is that popcorn or what is that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Exactly at the right time. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So how how we handle all this post-truth era is is a little hard for for the government. So what other possibilities are there? Which steps can we take to to get along? So this hard reality to make it easier to digest for the people. So we have looked in which country this works well. So we came in Canada. In Canada, there's a prime minister. Maybe you know him. Is Justin Trudeau? Justin Trudeau is. is uh, he looks very nice and very handsome, and is, is a nice guy. And so he he has it easy. And um, we don't know if you if you find the the pattern. If you see a pattern here, we'll show you some pictures. Oh. Oh. Oh, Moment, Moment. There's the, the boss, and so the queen, and uh, he finds it's the prime minister of Bangladesh, also likes him, and our chancellor likes him. <laughs> And if, if you really have this kind of charisma, then you can really do a lot of things. Canada has turned into a surveillance state with everything you need for it, with uh, secret services off the leash and, and everything that goes with it. When, if, you, if you have a prime minister who likes pandas, then you can do all that. So free trade agreement, oh, we talk about CETA, and you will... See a miracle now. Even Sigmar Gabriel looks nice when he's when he's uh, side by side with Trudeau, uh, the German Minister for Economy for Economic Affairs. 
gut, ja, so diese ganzen Kritik an diesem Franz. So Kommt all the ja, criticism on, oh. of Sita. Oh. So Canada, hat dann noch so so Canada has Problematik. Ich weiß nicht, ob this, uh, this problem with the oil slicks. They have uh, oil, which is a bit hard to, to get out of the ground, and you need very long pipelines. And if they burst, uh, there's an environmental problem, and it's, it's not very nice. So... It would have been too nice um, if someone could do something about it. There were some hopes um, put on Trudeau and there were protests against those policies and politics. But um, he just, he just uh, approved the pipeline and so against the... He just did some tricks then and we looked for an extreme example for this uh, politics um, are there people who also try to do this so that's that's him as well so look pay attention to the tattoo es gab halt Nachahmer, die waren eigentlich nicht so ganz erfolgreich there were imitators they were not quite as quite as successful uh, in the united states Uh, they tried, and there's one question in, in politics, if everybody lies, how can you find out things? If, if you look at politicians in their natural habitat, how can you find out what kind of people they are? The traditional methods are listening to them, that's just only partially helpful, more devices won't help. And there are several ways to try that. There were uh, clairvoyance, so they tried to see into the future. And uh, then were Kreml astrology. It was really uh, looking at some indicators on pictures from from Russia and who about whom more articles were written and uh, on diplomatic receptions and which direction the Kremlin was moving. And in the 90s, in Wall Street, there was a new comeback of that. And with, uh, with Alan Greenspan, that is the the chief monetary, monetary chief of the US and one tried to to find out by the thickness of his briefcase if if the interest rates would go up or down and it, it was just a joke the, the Greenspan briefcase indicator but but others then uh, also talked about that and it, it established was established very quickly. And something like that should be there today. There's, it's very unscientific, but we would try to find an indicator that really works. And I think we think we found one. We put, put a lot of images through machine learning algorithms uh, in the cloud, of course, to find an indicator. And our machine learning systems actually found something and that is the umbrella. So this is really like a, like a love story for, for teenagers. And we show other pictures, see if you can find the difference. So this is this. In the beginning, everyone has its, has his own umbrella, and then they have one, one umbrella for two. All right, just a moment. Here's another one. Just, but in, umbrellas are indicators for, for something else, not only cooperation between countries, but also um, looking at politicians, um, evaluating politicians. Can he really solve hard problems? Yeah, that, he can do that. Is he more egocentrical or, or is he ready to help others? Is the marriage still working? So we have to be careful. Don't don't uh, come to rush conclusions. So is it a good politician? That is beyond personal personal niceness. Or if they can uh, take a step back to for other people's advantage and uh, take the disadvantage for himself. And this picture shows that quite well in contrast to the other pictures. You can see on the right. So, even in the second row, sometimes you can, you can find something from umbrellas if someone has a career in front of them or not. And this is what you can see here. 
So will he be promoted or does he have to go to the Gulag? Who knows, maybe tidy the radar stations in Siberia. But maybe the umbrella has also historically been a good indicator. Maybe we should have paid attention to that earlier. <laughs> it's a very nice, very nice motif for images there. Umbrellas. It's just wonderful. 2016, we tried to positive sides. 2016 was a year, a year of the arts, and we can see by the Albion, the Philharmonic building in Hamburg. Uh, which notoriously took a long time to finish. And they're, they're the same question we have in other places. And some people would bet on it. And we have this guy here who was a political commentator. And people were betting on which tie he was wearing on a particular day. And sometimes during, the, during one interview or one uh, program, he changed his tie six times. So some poli politicians also have other, um, can do other things. And uh, as you see, Cap Cameron. He was known, he was actually singing after, after the Brexit. He just resigned as prime minister and then was singing. That was a nice exit. Really. So 2016, this is the German comedian uh, Böhmermann. Uh, was very famous for insulting um, the Turkish prime minister. Turkish president, yes, thank you. And there were others. The CEO of a publishing company, and uh, said that he was <laughs> was agreeing with Böhmermann, and and um, then Erdogan also um, filed a lawsuit against against this CEO. Um, who is maybe a more important person in the economy than a small comedian. So more pieces of art as public art. Um, maybe it's not immediately clear whether or not this is art or maybe it's just rubbish. And here's a, a nice example. Um, construction workers found something and they didn't know what it was. It was a cylinder. Cylindrical and it was from resin with metal splinters. This is not a picture of the, the actual object. There are no pictures of that, but there are pictures, objects like this. So what was it? Somebody knows. It's Orgonite and it is used to fight against chemtrails in the esoteric realm. So oh, it's a big conspiracy theory that airplanes just spray chemicals and not just exhaust gas. So it's quite interesting to have people uh, leave that in open places, in public places. So there are other pieces of art, uh, cloaking devices. Um, this is always something that uh, artists Use. Artists in Brazil tried to rob a bank and uh, had heard that if they glue aluminium foil to their bodies, they will be invisible to surveillance cameras. Uh, well, yeah, that, that worked very well, as you can see. So art in the in public spaces, uh, other people also do that if they want to influence public public opinion. Like this nice picture, TTIP is hope, and below that is it says initiative new social market. This is a, this is, has been founded by um, uh, was a lobby organization by employers and. 
their description is that they want to promote um, liberal reforms in the, in the marketplace. So liberal reform, liberal reform sounds a lot better than, than destroying um, and destroying employment. Uh, so this is one of the highlights um, art. Do you know what that is? So the Austrian uh, candidate for the new right, this is obviously satire. Um, but they're offering the the new right candidate um, a place at the at the art academy as Hitler was uh, many years ago, not offered. So this is an honorary an honorary prize you're getting, and obviously he he won it all. So it's not necessarily a, an artwork as such, but it's um, maybe the creative potential of a situation that are liberated in a certain moment uh, to express artistic um, intentions. So we take one example in Scotland, uh, Donald Trump's golf course. So, and the, the Scottish were saying, well, we'd like to have a cattle farm here in the, in the way of, of his nice uh, sea view. And of course, Trump tried to sue against that and uh, failed on all, all levels. And so after all that, um, he was on, on a tour in, in Scotland visiting. And so this was their reception. They had a little band to welcome him. And there was another artist at the occasion uh, to, to, to make the most of the occasion. He, he got lots and lots of golf balls for, for Donald Trump. And you have to zoom a little bit closer to see what was distributed all over the court with a tiny little swastika on it. And so we again noticed that uh, the, the Scots are really world class. At insulting people. So this was just uh, number one. So I won't read it out, but the placard is, is, explains itself. Well, it es it's escalating quickly and we're just highlighting the best parts for your delectation. Well, maybe delectation. <laughs> So very creative expressions and insults. <laughs> Two paid fuck trumpet is is the highlight nicely underlined by, by the hair. So sometimes obviously the artistic value or benefit of, of such an action can only be evaluated and esteemed uh, in after the fact. So what we see now the Russian Secret Service, which is also a kind of police academy, and so they um, made a video of themselves cruising through um, through with this very uh, through the Moscow city with these very instant conspicuous cars. And oh yeah, that's so so far away you can't can't recognize a thing. So that's a, a trick of high definition has has its drawbacks. But another artist, a work of art, uh, the, the troll trolling of the year, and this was ha uh, happened in Oregon in the United States. So we had an armed conflict with a sort of American version of Reichsbürger, of right wing activists, and so uh, people told them that if they uh, said when being questioned that they are, that they are idiots um, they uh, it didn't really help it didn't really help but they didn't declared uh, themselves idiots in their statements and 
incompetent in the hope of being not being oh well that was the the matching face for this statement so not to be subjected to to court rules etc that was the idea so have a look at the, the quote and maybe even read it a second time this is a a letter to the editor, to an Austrian, Austrian newspaper. This is about vaccines, which are a conspiracy of the, far, uh, the pharma industry. Uh, there are a lot of, well, bizarre typos uh, in this. In this, well, playing with words, it's very hard to explain, but instead of uh, caritative, instead of uh, Sisyphus work, um, there are lots of, well, jokes in Latinized words, so just look at it a second time. And this kind of thing usually can't nece necessarily be improved through a, a comment, but in this case, Correction, the pharma industry. So there are lots of jokes and puns with misspellings of, of, of words, of terminologies. And well, we thought what, what you can always start is a meme, of course, to try and make a little series of jokes. And so I, I present, prepared a presentation. You have a very simple, simple model. You start with in Soviet Russia, then you have some kind of task. So very, very simple structure, but in the other way, in the other word order than you would usually use. So an easy example in Soviet Russia, president assassinate you. So you invert the usual word order. So let's practice. In Soviet Russia, find a caption, law break you. Okay, okay, ein haben wir noch, ein haben wir noch. Ja. In space, Soviet Russia, space explore you. So this is just a little practice, but we noticed this year that uh, um, the same kind of pattern is not, uh, of course, limited to online memes. We have a few examples from real life. So kennt man das? Ja, wir haben hier einen Vormann des Bundesamtes für Verfassungsschutz und der hat die Islamistische so, infiltriert. This is an informer also from, from the German Secret Service. Um, so we just turned it the other way around. What uh, old news is capitalism, but in Soviet 26, Islamists infiltrate you. So there were claims of the protection for the constitution, um, paying money to Al-Qaeda fighters, uh, transactions. In 2016, you had uh, uh, informants that were exposed, and in 2016, the informants uh, t talk about the police. Um, the same, it doesn't work that well. Um, there were child pornography servers that were run uh, by the police. And not just one or two, but several of them. So, you probably have seen this one. Uh, in the, nowadays, the ads are blocked from you. Um, so, uh, when you visited uh, Build.de with an ad blocker, you couldn't visit the site. It was quite a scandal or discussion in Germany. There used to be interests paid to you, but nowadays you pay. Uh, you pay. Uh, it's the other way around. You have negative. T um, yeah. American protect terrorists from you in the 2016. Yeah, sometimes you, you turn stuff around. Kinder alle, ne? Oh, right. Aber, ja, an schon. And again, um, should be able to read them. <laughs> In 2016, you make videos to scare terrorists. 2015, 2015 Apple, mit Warnungen, Apple, vor unsicheren chinesischen Nachbarprodukten, soweit alles normal. Uh, 
cheap uh, knockoffs from China in 2016. China wants against uh, bad quality of Apple products. China wants against bad quality of Apple products. Sorry. So, eine, eine kleine uh, Bonusfolie noch aus der Richtung. Small slide. If that, or the, die Punchline kommt gleich. Uh, <coughs> Diese, diese Läden da unten rechts, die, das ist kein Photoshop. Die ist so there is not a Photoshop, ja, aber was man als Außenstehender nicht unbedingt What you sofort don't ahnt, recognize immediately äh, is fake. that they're all fake. Also nicht eine so von diesen Läden ist tatsächlich der Apple Store, ist nicht von Apple, der Samsung Store ist nicht von Samsung. Und hier the Apple Store is not from Apple, the Samsung Store is not from Samsung. And here's a company that creates Apple products for years. And They noticed that people CEO saw gefühlt, uh, shops haben. from them and then the CEO told the press that there are no das shops from them anywhere. So, so it's a fake in third of third order. Ja, Steuern, so uh, tax uh, 2015. in 2015, Apple pays tax. Das ist jetzt auch ein weit hergeholt, well, it's a bit far-fetched, isn't it? <laughs> Aber das ist schon mal was Neues. That's something new, genau. where uh, tax pays Apple, where every US... Um, was uns zu den Nachrichten aus der Wirtschaft yeah. geht. So, to the news from uh, the economy. So, hardware used to be heavy and, um, and it gets lighter and lighter and smaller and smaller. <laughs> And there are other trends that might be less conspicuous. For example, the one I look at now, uh, 2014, it, we bought hardware. 2015, we noticed that uh, hardware surveils us. And 2016, we noticed that hardware kills us. So this, you can see the same pattern in different examples. For example, in 2014, smartphones were... Great. In 2015, uh, smartphones called home, and in 2016, we had small explosions. Uh, that didn't look that well. Did someone just pull, uh, try to get his phone out? I did. Uh, household items used to be very secure. You buy them and connect them. And, uh, and then, then the first IoT people uh, started to work with uh, cloud and IoT, and uh, then uh, they checked it with the surveillance. Uh, don't tell anything secret in front of the TV, and don't tell anything private in front of the TV. That was last year. This year, they flew, flew up at us. They blew up at us. Doesn't look good. You see the pattern and we looked into it and someone else would have to recognize that Samsung has a real strange path, a real strange path, the Galaxy S7 and the uh, washing machines. And Samsung also does um, mil military equipment. And we looked in a dark corner and saw this secret. Die DARPA works with something with Siemens. Look at the safety sticker. sticker. Apparently, this car is full of washing machines with telephones inside of them. Right. Samsung wasn't the only one with uh, danger of explosion. so danger of explosions at 170,000 stoves. Cameras, you used to be able to buy them, no problem, quite cheap, then there were the first shows that maybe you should pay attention who you buy them from, exactly, he covered up his camera with uh, some sticky tape and this escalated in 2016 and the uh, camera suddenly turned into botnet hosts and destroyed the internet for us. So, of course, you can spend some time without internet. It feels like death, perhaps, but in certain circles it's more difficult because it turns out that in Finland, in some communes, the public heating supply was connected to the internet and they really were shivering. The uh, sensors that controlled it, so surveillance cameras kill, New slogan.
Right. China Plastics, 2014, no problem. You bought it, it was broken, but never mind, it was cheap as well. In 2015, it turns out that you have to look very closely. They surveil us. Uh, that plastic things, what's the headline there? Can you read it? Uh, you will hear more of this, but still, in 2016, that wasn't... So, confetti raining down heavily and someone upsailing from the ceiling and running off stage. If you're not seeing this, chunk has been ruined. So, what was that all about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the China plastics have taken a strange turn this year to began with electric shocks uh, well of course we won't go home without a proper explosion right so that happened too and some people then took it the, took this personally to some extent evil board explodes yeah although I have learned today you learn new things at Congress of course uh, that the actual problem was that the mechanical working was so bad that there were edges that stood out and those then punctuated the accumulator and that started off these explosions but these are not the only accumulators or batteries that had problems even in cases where you did buy would have died earlier there was an update this year bonus slides cigarettes you know cigarettes the Marlboro men were dying off from lung cancer one after the other that's known but and you know you know how it is with technology, everything has to be quicker these days, even dying. So e-cigarettes that explode in your trouser pockets, that didn't look good. Our cars, you know, e-cars 2014, all great, looking great. 2015, you notice where this is going. They started monitoring you, surveilling you, and in 2016, well, you can imagine, right, what happened in 2016. They just blew up on us again, but not just high-tech things like this are dangerous uh, and affected. Also things that you think you know, toilets. 2014, you know how it goes, right? Trusted look, trusted image, familiar image, you can't have much happening then, and then it started, right? First, they were surveilled. Hang on, hang on. Ah, well, this is an old sticker by Digital Courage, actually. Um, but, you know, we won't be going home without an explosion again and a building site toilet explodes in the city of Fürth. So you see where it was, can't you? But you can imagine not very appetizing. But well, that's all engineering, right? Uh, it's an engineering problem, so maybe in science it's all better we thought so we let's 2016 was announced as the year of science so this is uh, something star 7x which we visited so a record this year or a, a breakthrough a milestone gravitational waves were proven a great year on that regard then this you've probably seen as well, science advances, so you have Kaida sitting there, right, or what? And, uh, well, all around a good, good scientific year at some universities, although, well, mediocre. Um, that's a Bielefeld technical high school offering their first bachelor studies for vegan diets. And this is a kind of flat joke that I couldn't avoid uh, because there was this headline this year that was so great. Sausage, oh, you see it in English, says, sausage-wielding extremists attack vegan cafe in Tbilisi. I had to include this, surely you can see. And an interesting definition of extremist, right? 
Yeah, we'll stay with science. Uh, good news, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen, a defense minister who faked her doctorate thesis, can keep her doctorate title. No malbehavior led by an intention to deceive. So that was what the university said, so everything fine. Uh, Microsoft improved its AI this year, which AI again where it was a big topic in general. And it was trained a bit too hard and, well, it's a teenager, right? They are impressible and it kind of went downhill quickly, it escalated quite quickly. And then tweets were protected. This was a tweet bot for Microsoft. But you have to see the positive side. It's not a total disaster. People were saying, well, we should keep this. Uh, preserve this as a monument, the dangers of AI. So, science also in 2016 determined that uh, fracking is completely harmless. You can see it here. <laughs> Finally proven. And, well, science, of course, is more than research. It's about education as well. You have to spread the knowledge. So, in a few places this year, we saw a certain need for that. For example, at the Berlin Lageso, the authority that is for social services and receiving refugees. So, supplying refugees with documents, and they completely failed there and uh, a, a completely chaotic situation that can only be described as authority failure, but s something had to happen. And of course they got experts in, or we did, the Bertelsmann Arvato people, very well-known data analyst. Uh, but let's go back. Refugee management efficient process design, best practice dialogue in the future workshop and the arena of solutions. What was that interjection? I, I didn't. I didn't understand. Mm, okay. So I don't know. So another thing that really makes the illustration more interesting than the background. This is an air cleansing device, purification device. You know the China images, so the need is there. There is a smog problem, and the Dutch said, "Well, we'll do something about it." And we saw an illustration of the device in action, got it from the archives, and we found that this has been existing for a long time. And that's another classic French movie, Louis de Funès. Yeah, Louis de Funès, classic French comedian. It was exactly that kind of device in that film. And the world is clean. Yes, not just that, there's also a prototype for the next generation for 2017. That's when it will be introduced. But we've got some secret images. Suck. And that is, of Suck. course, from the, from the movie Spaceballs, the giant space vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Well, pull yourself together. 2016 was also a high-tech year. We all remember the great achievements, and politics, of course, had to deal with that as well. And politics and technology is always a certain difficult topic. There are certain frictions, particularly when it's about cyber. Clearly, this is a trade fair visit by Mrs. Merkel, but some people lead the way, such as Oettinger, the EU Commissioner and uh, the Traffic Minister, Dobrindt, uh, the person responsible for the data highways as well. The Traffic Minister and Oettinger used to be responsible for digitalization. Then the Cyber Bullshit Award that we originally called, uh, named after Richard Clark. Now, he uh, said things about encryption and privacy being larger issues than fighting terrorism. So he kind of disqualified himself as a patron for this. So we need a new one. And that was more difficult than we thought. Of course, first we thought of Donald. But then, as he 
expressed himself concerning cyber, it wasn't completely disputable what he said. You need two or three approaches until passing, being able to pass that last one. But he claims, what well, his claims are not complete nonsense. They're not, not obvious nonsense. He simply doesn't know. He doesn't have a clue. And that I prefer to someone cl claiming complete bullshit. So Donald Trump is out. So who else do we have? How about Mr. Oettinger? Let's see. Merkel, of course, has full trust in Oettinger. Sorry, his deadline's been called already. That's, that has been the norm when Merkel expressed something like that. So this is just the, uh, the new chief of the German security IT authority, Schönborn. Mm. Unfortunately, the press um, only reacted with a certain moderate positive attitudes, uh, called, calling him a cyber clown. So this was a second-rate candidate, but that's not the core of the issue anyway. If you look at Lopipedia, what his career was, starting at the bottom there, well, yeah. Well, you don't really want something, someone like that at the head of the Internet Security Agency. So maybe you can call him a cyber clown, but where does this actually come from? And we found the original quote um, from industry insiders uh, mocked as cyber clown. He does not have any indication of technical expertise. Where does this actually come from? Ah, governed by lay people. Um, from some kind of demo, probably one of the Freedom Not Fear series. <laughs> um, so, Interior Ministry looks for voluntary cyber fire brigade. So, is he really that bad? What did he do? Well, surely you've noticed the cyber defense, so he started in force, voluntary brigade that uh, industry experts would be lent to the state free for a, or for a small fee uh, to help cybering at cyber things, and the internet was immediately enthusiastic. Well, no, the, um, they apply forceful cyber, right? This illustration comes from the computer build, the computer branch of Germany's largest tabloid and largest newspaper overall. Cyber war, make it great again, yeah. New country will defend, oh, there was this quote that our freedom is defended at the Hindu Kush uh, concerning the Afghanistan war and then Later, Merck account called the internet a new area, and this new area will be defended at the mouse pad because we have a large age range here with the large target group. We have the whole thing in Metro as well. BSI, Cyber Brigade, we serve voluntarily. And again, the internationally convincing version hack the planet with Mr. Putin. So, cyber bullshit now is a huge category, but there are many entries where you just take one glance and immediately see <laughs> bullshit, bullshit. Um, but if you look closely, the, the name actually, well, the rest is bullshit too, but the name, so they've asked an expert and they said that they are, this is ridiculously optimistic, this is complete bullshit, yeah, as they have says there, machine learning. Surprise, surprise. And uh, it's about terminology as well, not just the actual statement, but someone being able to coin a new term that has a direct response uh, that can only be described as bullshit. And we had a nice case this year. Exactly, the dormant cyber pathogen. Uh, something like we will all die. Um, it's... it's lying in wait cyber pathology and, and the advantage with the pathogen is that there are established defense strategies and sometimes that term cyber pathogen is kind of flexible you can extend it not just to viruses but also contents and there was this case um, of politicians called Anton um, Anthony Wiener who ended his career by posting lewd images too much and his telephone had to be uh, searched uh, 
because there were emails on them because he was married to Clinton's uh, main advisor. So someone has to do it, and this is how it looked. So this is how you deal with cyber pathogens. And um, another guest that we had this year uh, who also uh, expressed himself about cyber bullshit concerning the phone affair, when the FBI said under oath that the iPhone could not be opened in any other way but the way they were proposing, and then a week later they changed them, their mind, and uh, that was obviously cyber bullshit as well. And uh, another case of bullshit the crypto, in the crypto debate, well, the crypto debate is always ripe with bullshit. And it's not just targeted bullshit. It can also be a sign that someone just has no clue at all. It's not always meant in a manipulative way. It's not quite clear in this case, but the CIA director announced that cryptography outside the US doesn't really exist. A very theoretical concept, yes, exactly. And observers from the from Europe were kind of wondering this IS, this American AES, that American encryption algorithm, whether it actually come from oh, it's too. Belgians that invented it. Well, you can't know everything as a CIA chef, of course, head. So it's not good to know everything as well. So another headline for you here that should be enough already. IBM combines mainframes with the blockchain and the cloud. Mm. So if, it's, if there was a three-field bingo here, we would have had thousands of cheers now. No. All right. The, without the blockchain, nothing goes these days. Of course, there's cyber bullshit in Germany as well. You won't be surprised to hear that the telecom chef, uh, if you've ever listened to him, he this year really gave it his all. And uh, the timing was kind of unfortunate, though, because at, nearly at the same time, there was this highly announced security conference talking about Putin problems and the whole plastic, plastic routers that the telecom had distributed. Um, uh, failed at the same time, but then you can always call for a cyber NATO and that announcement that all telecommunication customers could be happy. So it all gets a bit nicer if you look at the way the format looked, uh, the announcement was made, we know what we're doing. There was a huge failure of, of telecom routes at the same time in Germany. Um, now, with the next plastic router apocalypse that affected routers, they had a proper warning that they released, and then we suddenly realized something is strange about this report, and we looked a bit closer and then found risk level five. The question then was, what actually is risk level five? It's a warning. So five is kind of report is a warning. And we then asked around and uh, was kind of evasive. Uh, it's, it's not quite clear. And um, we asked, why is it such a problem? Because actually Germany, if you look at the bandwidth statistics, how much do we have? Uh, about what's the ratio of fiber to the home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, they have surpassed the 1% mark. The, at least that. But there is way for room for improvement there. We've shown it to Poland. So with high tech, sometimes the problem is that if you start too early with certain device categories, you get prototypes that have the issues, early issues. So there have been remarkable instances there. So the Berlin police in winter noticed that uh, it gets cold. And the uh, the cars with the radio communication failed, not just one, but 60. Uh, we had this internal police report found it, and this report that the code made it fail, it was true, but it wasn't. It was actually just a cover up that the weather was responsible, because actually, this reason, yeah. And then there was the problem with this harmless childhood diseases. They affect technicians, an F-33 fighter jet, 
pilots have to turn it off and on again sometimes, and that was kind of known, familiar to us. We found a secret video from the service center for the F-33 with the pilot, 35, with the pilot up in the air and uh, not really coping and everything's wobbling about and machines spiraling out of control, a few thousand meters left to the ground, and he then calls the service center. And it's a thing from the IT crowd, from yeah. the British sitcom, which is his standard phrase, the first thing that he always says, and there's a service call. So not just small planes are affected, but bigger ones as well. Uh, harmless childhood disease. The, the Dreamliner had, Dreamliner had to be rebooted a few times as well. So if you're flying home from Congress and catch a 787, get to the cockpit and ask when it was booted for the last time. That was actually the second time that happened to the Dreamliner. Yeah. Mm, here's the expert, and you'll take over from me now. It's not only in the air, uh, but on the ground there's no... You can't just fall down, but the most expensive destroyer gets stuck in the Panama Canal. And it's a bit embarrassing, and water was running through the through the uh, gasket by the by the propeller, and well, it's not a big problem. And also in Germany, there's the tornado, the German. British-Italian fighter jet also has problems after the software update. And, uh, new problems again. So, you know, from from driving your car, if you if you turn on the headlights and the cockpit lights go on, and so the cockpit illumination was too bright, so the pilots couldn't see at night. And the drones are crashing left and right for the United States. And, uh, so the Global Hawks, the big drones of the US, um, are crashing and they have to deal with it somehow. And they really don't, don't want to know that every, that every, really don't want that everybody knows. So they just um, put these stickers on, on it. Um, there really were some innovations in dealing with technology. So there was a case where the police, the police had a drone, not the military, it was police killed someone with a drone and there was a, a disarming drone, a disarming robot for, for bombs and drove up to, to the sniper and then exploded the bomb on the robot beside the beside the terrorist or the, the attacker and then they yeah, asked for an upgrade to that. Das wird auch den einen oder hier haben. And there's another upgrade which well, would have affected update. someone, some people of you, it was the Windows 10 update. Um, um, das ist nicht immer nur zu opportunen Zeiten and gekommen, it sondern doesn't always, always come at, at nice at nice points in time, but had, has interrupted the weather report, weather report sometimes, or destroyed the menu at a restaurant. Another high-tech innovation is uh, voice recognition, and now you talk to your devices, and the voice recognition uh, is coming to your home, and then Amazon has uh, something that's called Alexa, and there's a device that's called Echo, and with that device you can just talk to the device, and uh, the address, so you say hello Siri with Apple, and to, for Amazon you say hello Alexa, and then the device knows you talk, you're talking to it, and it turns out hello is optional, for Alexa, and then in, in practice it can sometimes lead to problems. And, uh, well, there are actually people who are called Alexa, so... Um, the Internet of Things is a thing that we have to deal with this year, and there were some high-tech things this year, especially for nerds, it's very attractive because if you can, if you like to tinker, then you can spend hours with it. So there was an Englishman who tried to to make a Wi-Fi-enabled tea maker, and it didn't quite work, and he posted on Twitter live what he was debugging, and it was 
quite technically challenging. Und ähm, als er von seinem no. Cluster zu reden anfangen, when so he talked about uh, his gefragt, ob das uh, his cluster, his MOOC cluster. Aber wenn, dann ist das eine schöne Satire. And, uh, we don't know if it was ja, if it was real, but it, so at least it was a good satire so. then. So ja. there's a ja. internet ja. in ja. in heating. So, hallo Siri, mm -hmm. mach doch mal die Haustür auf. Oder hello Siri, open the door, Siri, please. Mal, um, hello Siri. Um, and transfer um, all the money from the PayPal account, from the PayPal yeah. account, Manchmal or something like that. And, and sometimes um, it also gets hot. Und manchmal wird's auch ein bisschen kalt. And sometimes <laughs> it's a bit cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, was bei so Sicherheitsproblemen what, ja immer fast wichtiger ist als das eigentliche What's Problem, important about security Hersteller problems is and how the manufacturer will ja. react. And there's a very nice example for manufacturer of, of the, the most widespread webcam DDoS. There's a Chinese manufacturer who said, well, security issues, everyone has those, and that's just, that's all right that it, that it happens to our products. So it's just industry standard, and it's, we don't worry about it. And so... We, they didn't say it, it's going to get better, but it's just standard. So the good news from this year. Die NSA hat Nachwuchssorgen. The um, NSA. Weil NSA is oh. best. Why well, you can read it? Are leaving in big numbers. So nobody wants to Die work Presse for them. Ist ein bisschen schlecht. <laughs> they got some bad press apparently. Die Chine genau. Aus ihrer Sicht ist es Lügenpresse natürlich. Ja. So, yeah, the lying press as, as the Auch slogans of some German right-wing demonstrations go. Solar Energy is richtig billig geworden. So, das Solar Energy ist, uh, is very cheap now. China, zu unterbieten. China actually reduced their CO2 emissions uh, beyond their targets, and Germany didn't. And uh, well, Germany says we don't really need to do anything about it if, if China burns so much coal, but if China actually makes progress, then, then we can we can also do it. So on the employment market, um, IT personnel is sought after, and customers perhaps become very insistent if you didn't fix the problem quickly enough, but that's rather an opportunity than a bad thing. The war on terror is almost over, we have won, so the right hand of Osama bin Laden is also dead, and his other right hand is also dead, and another, <laughs> another right hand, so how many right hands did he have? So, by the end of the year, let's, let's stop. Let's stop at this one. No, 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 no. Yeah, this one. Yeah, there's the small print. <laughs> His death had been reported multiple times already. So, and there was some change in the rhetoric. Suddenly, Bin Laden's right hands uh, have not been killed, but they only had financial problems. And they requested political asylum. So the war against terror has been won, or almost. But sometimes there are misunderstandings, uh, which, and, the, and we see them more negative than they really are. And if you look closely, you can see that it, in fact, it's actually great what was happening. And there's one thing this year, the only have to watch closely, and this is the election of, of Trump. It was wonderful. It was, in fact, it was really great. So we found this news of the RNC, that's the party organization of the Republican Party, and the election of Trump was... was uh, hmm? was celebrated like, like the, the coming of Christ. And, uh, so yeah, he was. He's a he's a figure of of salvation and a bringer of light. So now the market is up ten percent. Oh, so the, the people from the censorship bureau were were at the toilet. So. 
Sometimes yeah, the sensor, yeah, the sensor took a, took a toilet break, and so and sometimes you wonder who who chooses the pictures, and and some of the subtitler took a nap. Um, it shows a picture of Clinton and chance of Bernie. So sometimes there are some ambiguous images. If you look at the where the people in the background are looking, it's, a, it's quite strange what's what's happening here. But the really the, the core topic is really um, the content, and we have an old example here. Of, in our partner in, in, the, in, in democracy, uh, Mr. Mr. Erdogan, in 1998, he said, we don't really take it serious with democracy, but, but uh, there's more to talk about it. Yeah. A journalist was told to um, communicate four uh, asylum seekers and um, they did it all at once. But we got quite close to the real truth and uh, you don't have to read all of it. I, I saw and heard that the leader of other planets are um, afraid because Allerdings ist diese Passage im offiziellen Transkript verschwunden aus irgendwelchen Datenschutzrechtlichen because they are interested in which way the European Union is going to ch uh, choose and uh, yeah, you can see the image. Sometimes people who are used to talking with the pr uh, press is, uh, talk about something and they, in this time, he talked about uh, the one, uh, the, the person who takes care of the completely overpaid and not working Berlin airport said that billions were um, misspent. So that was the press speaker uh, who said that, and the Lith Lithuanians um, said, we, we must reduce our historical feelings, and um, the was the Lithuanian president. Den, äh, unser Verfassungspräsident, der ein bisschen sauer über seine Mitarbeiter war, meinte so, die ähm, immer, da muss man mal was tun. Äh, äh, German Internal Secret Service äh, Leader äh, wanted to ähm, was angry about persons who leaked information and he wanted to uh, put up crosses in the courtyard of the this secret service organization and nail or uh, um, um, employees to them. We have a leaked image of that uh, happening. But we don't have enough time. So what's all this about? There was a locked um, just, and they looked into it every other week and they found something new every time. So NSU or SIM cards or whatever. And with the four previous looking into the, uh, uh, the box, they didn't find it, but we don't know how it looks. And apparently the lockbox looks like this. Well, maybe we'll find something else with a larger model. And you might remember this uh, Council of Foreign Relations and the CE director was there and he had some quite interesting, remarkable ideas and he said um, geoengineering, uh, stratospheric aerosol injection mm, to change weather patterns Mm. Do you think about that? Um, and this is a video. Uh, 
So three extra aluminum. Um, it's about uh, chemtrails. chemtrails. And now we wait. And now we wait. No. You all know what's uh, how it's continuing. It's on YouTube. You can find it. The NSA warns against cloud computing. Um, that was on a conference where they sent someone from technology who, for one of the organization who hacks other people's, and he says. Uh, what you can do to not get hacked and his main um, recommendation was not to use cloud computing. Not only the CIA and the NSA were saying surprising things, the FBI as well said surprising truth. For example, they assured us that the election machines were so secure because it's so bad, nobody can hack it. Some of the, there are statements from politicians who were supposed to be diplomatic and look this diplomatic, like the French foreign minister, and he said about his new uh, colleague from across the pond from um, the UK. Uh, yeah, it's not completely untrue. And when Boris Johnson heard about it, uh, this is a photo of him. Yes, and sometimes uh, it's the other way around, that you try to hide uh, what you said from the public. And the Pentagon published a study uh, to say about how much money is lost, usually by public problems, usually, or where they said, it's not that much, and they wanted to show some new information, and they wanted to see that two millions were lost and one billion was found, but with 25 billion dollars, uh, half a million doesn't look that well, so they slide, just dropped the study. The Prime Minister of Japan, Japan, not the current, but the one back then, um, he also had some, well, uh, the sensor was on a loop, right? The situation was a bit worse than expected. So he had some real good uh, person and he asked his nuclear uh, suppliers um, uh, whether he knew anything and he said, no, I just studied um, uh, economics. The same with TEPCO. So we see the new uh, chef of, of uh, Tokyo Electric here, who was who obviously wanted to clarify a couple of a uh, couple of things. So like um, admonishing his his predecessor not maybe to use the word meltdown, etc. Uh, well, you could say in retrospect, he said, quote, uh, it was a cover-up, extremely regrettable. So that brings us to the Anatoly Bugorsky Award for Applied Nuclear Safety. And that was a, well, high competition this year. So, uh, Europe, of course, yeah, yeah. present as well. Uh, Belgium, all-time favorite. So uh, their reactors are so broken that they can't actually cool their cooling water tank. So increase is, uh, well, plus 10 degrees uh, Celsius is okay, but, um, well, the, the degrees have been uh, gradually adapted, as you can see here. So... If, if things are heated up, so what they do now is actually heat the water in advance. So if, if you have 50 degrees Celsius, it's, it's too hot. So if, if it's, well, if 40, 45 degrees, you know, we have a bit of space to, to maneuver. Well, atomic waste, uh, where if you want to leave it somewhere, traditionally the best place to leave your atomic waste is very close to the border of your neighboring 
countries, and that's exactly the same uh, what's happened uh, happening at the uh, can Canadian-American border, U.S. border. Uh, you can see uh, Detroit and Toronto on the map here. <laughs> and in between that, we can see the, the nuclear waste uh, right, uh, right in the middle of the Big Lakes area. Of course, no problem, no danger of contaminated water. In South Canada, is where the most people live in Canada. So if you have a if you have a pool of water in the nuclear reactor, what do you do with it? So they found a solution: a swimming pool for campers is what they bought. And when that was filled up, when that was filled up, they bought tubes, and when they were full, do you know these from the camps? Is that where we put our waste? Well, when they were full, they had to go back to the supermarket and bought this very nicely shaped sample. Of course. Nuclear safety is safe with us. But how exactly how safe it is? Well, you can you can see how little tiny events uh, are enough to to cause major problems, and that was exactly what what happened to a nuclear power plant near near New York, which was actually taken down by bird poop. And we found an image of the suspected. Well, nuclear safety isn't related to buildings, etc., but also to, well, maybe artifacts and gadgets. Something uh, was found by, by, by divers and thought, oh dear, I found a, a UFO, but of course it was a nice story all the same. Just atomic weapons. So we know that things are leading towards the end if you get to the rich, which is Nixon Lame Excuse Award, one of the nicest samples this year. <laughs> the browser extension, you might have heard of it, replaced the phrase Donald Trump with someone with tiny hands, and this was actually used in a news item, as you can see here. Correction was necessary. But it's, it's not only the excuse, but the euphemism, the euphemism itself. Uh, so it's not pre-crime in information environment. Uh, we don't call it a big data platform, but a unified environment. So it's a matter of vocabulary. So we had another popcorn event here. So suddenly people had to had to explain. Obama, uh, this is about the no, no spy agreement, um, saying maybe we could stop spying on our on our European partners. And well, there were questions, for instance, like, well, why uh, was America monitored? Uh, she's our partner officially, isn't she? But the response went into the well. The response was basically, well, actually, we're trying to listen to Putin, and it wasn't exactly exactly her phone, because we were already monitoring it and had her under complete surveillance before she was even chancellor, when her predecessor was still in office. And so, you know, what happens when you have uh, temporary solutions installed, never touch your any system, you know that. Nice story from Seattle, where there is someone <coughs> snapping at the heels, uh, uh, someone fighting cameras with court cases, and in this case it was the electric infrastructure of uh, whatever, and he wanted to know what the FBI surveillance cameras on those utility poles were doing. And of course that wasn't just, that just wasn't on, but the excuse they found, that was really great because they said this was an invasion to the privacy of those people under investigation if they said where these cameras were. and. 
Next item is funny on many levels because it's about a data base at the U.S. Air Force and uh, complaints that we are talking about now are about someone stole my food from the fridge or I found a corruption affair that I think I have uncovered. And of course, these things are outsourced to Lockheed Martin, for example. And of course, these would be the main suspects in the corruption affair, but they were running the database. And then there was this regrettable hardware failure. <clears throat> so this is close to the story where the tax records were uh, moved to a planet which was then eaten up a supernova or something. Yeah, well, it can happen, can't it? So we have this um, positive item here and well, then everything's fine. Uh, from our internet minister, traffic minister, Dobrindt, he found this innovative solution how to uh, install a um, overall and um, a surveillance system that is running all the time and it's all encompassing. Just say that we are looking after data protection, surely. Why didn't we think of that before? And of course, sometimes. It's not even the hardware itself that is the problem, but someone sim simply ignited it by mistake, and that's what happened to a Taiwanese warship towards China. And the rocket then went some 55 kilometers before hitting a Chinese trawler and left certain marks of use and unfortunately, we didn't quite find, find the excuse in that case. That was a mistake, uh, um, an oversight. It happens. Um, someone smoked it, probably, or, uh, or went to the loo. Or, uh, a source of joy, of course, was the NSA Committee of Investigation at the German Parliament for lame excuses. We found one just as a representative for the whole genre, and that was uh, file destruction. It was a reflex. Oh, yeah, right. You can't do anything about that then. And that brings us to our traditionally last section, the Balls of Steel Award. You know, uh, we premiere uh, citizens that have shown, have shown extraordinary courage. There have been new sports like this. And sometimes it's the context that makes things special. People at work uh, facing huge challenges, and there were people then that were that were well, kind of courageous, if not innovative, for defusing bombs. Uh, this guy is recovering improvised incendiary devices. Here's another one. Look. What could possibly go wrong? The blue one, the blue one. Another thing that really impressed us were the women in Poland that went, staged mass rallies and overturned a total ban on abortion. The Polish parliament took note. Also very impressive were the women in Saudi Arabia that uh, uh, bombarded the king's office with letters asking to be allowed to drive because they were fed up with the charade they had to go through. And And quite at the same level uh, was a project in Mali uh, where they too have a certain problem with Islamists, people calling themselves Islamists, that go and burn old libraries. 
then they smoked them out and burned them and uh, they got together and, and managed to uh, save from the city of Timbuktu that was about to be invaded all old books from those acts of war and, and destruction and there were a few obstacles to overcome there. And with that, as usual, we wish you a Merry Crisis and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Is that it? I thought we would have more. Yeah, That's we it. Have. <laughs> yeah, lights are up. Lights are up. So, thanks for listening. We've.